Wait, what the heck is this thing? Let's take a look at the dyno results on roller rockers on a 5 liter HO and this custom intake from AccuFab. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we got two very cool tests for the 5 liter Ford. No, not the Coyote, the OG one that started the 5 liter industry way back in the 80s. One, we have roller rockers, a very popular upgrade on all the 5 liters. So we're going to go from the stock rocker to a bolt down 1.7 roller rocker. But the very cool test is the one that you can kind of see behind me. It is a unique upper intake manifold that replaces the factory HO. This one was from AccuFab way back in 1990. It is a dual oval blade upper intake manifold never before tested. Let's find out what happens. Okay guys we're getting the five liter ready to run with a bunch of blower stuff from Kenny Bell. Right now we're gonna run an NA. Got the accessory drive on there. Getting ready to put the factory HO intake manifold on there. It has stock heads, stock rockers. We do have headers on it because that's what we need to run on the dyno. But everything else is stock. So we'll put this thing together, put the HO manifold, the upper and lower on it, run it NA, and then add some boost. Okay. Yeah, look at that. HO to go. I think that it being completely enclosed like that was probably scaring them. Yeah. HO. Okay, everything's up on the dyno, ready to run. Got our HO manifold up there. We're run a baseline run, see what the stock one makes with these long tube headers, and then we're gonna start swapping some parts. Okay guys, let's jump right in here and take a look at our roller rocker upgrade. We went from the factory stamp steel rockers on our 5 liter HO motor to the 1.7 ratio, stepping up from the 1.6 that are stock. We went to the 1.7 ratio Cobra, you know, roller rockers, basically bolt down roller rockers. We're going to get into why that that <laughs> actually turned into be a little bit of an issue. But first, let's take a look at the test. So our motor was a five liter Ford. It was a stock bottom end with stock block, crank rods, pistons, stock 302 E7 TE heads. It did have uh, valve springs in it because we were later going to put a camshaft in this thing. We ran it with the stock rockers, the stock HO upper and lower intake manifold, the stock throttle body. You see it had the accessories on it. We did have long tube headers on it, and we did dial this thing with, in with the Holly HP management system. We had bigger than stock injectors because uh, later on we would be putting a Kenny Bell supercharger in there. In fact, that's what all this testing started out as. We were going to run it NA and then put the Kenny Bell blower on it, but we ran a few NA tests, and one of them was stepping up to a roller rocker, and here's what happened when we did this. So we, what we did was dial in the stock combination with the stock rocker first. So again, I'm basically stock 350 or 302 HO motor with the stock upper and lower and stock throttle body, but with long tube headers. The combination produced 250 horsepower out here at uh, 4,800 RPM. Peak torque came 313 foot pounds at 35 and yeah, 3,500 RPM. Here's what happened after we removed the bolt down factory stamp steel rockers and installed the bolt down Cobra 17 rockers. I think Crane probably did these for Ford Racing back in the day, but these were the factory ones. You can see we did get some power gains and the power uh, went up to 258 horsepower. Peak torque was not up a lot because the gains increased with RPM, but 317, 318 foot pounds of torque. So you can see we got a gain, you know, increasing with RPM, kind of what we would expect with a rocker change. But there was an issue with this, and we're going to talk about this after we install that very cool dual like oval blade AccuFab intake.
We're gonna see how Eric's doing over here. The other side, three quarters of the way done. Oh, dude, you got something up. Look at that. Dude, that is full race right there. That's it, man. You definitely gotta do something on that. You don't still have that uh, dual blower one, do you, John? No, man. Bill threw that thing Bell out. Bell threw it away. Can you believe that? You <laughs> Let's see. Oh, we gotta go to the other side. That's right. We gotta flip it over. Wah, wah. <laughs> it goes over center too, so we gotta make sure that we don't go past center. So, dude, that's cool. Yeah, we got the line out from underneath her. Yeah, look at that. Is the gasket stuck on the bottom of that air? It has to be. So it's kind of in the middle there. Sweet. Oh, Justin, full throttle on that, baby. Look how thick those blades are. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. There we go. We're there. Sweet. Okay. This is how it goes from like part race to full race. Yeah, it should, it should lose all the foot pounds. Yeah, you definitely change the torque curve. Right? Oh yeah. It's gonna be like putting those boxes on there, the the Hartman yeah, box yeah. or the Downs right. box or any of that it's stuff. Wrong, you know those things all went away, man. You can't find things anywhere. Yeah, they um, West Tech had a couple of them. I think Troy threw them away that they had the. Um, the comp ones, because comp, I think, bought those from Hartman from back in the day. Yeah, we did. And they threw away a bunch of the um, those composite valve covers, too. No, 
Yeah. I know, Mark. I know. Okay guys, after running our roller rocker test, replacing the factory stamp steel rockers with the, the factory Cobra 1.7 bolt down roller rockers, we then stepped up and, and tried an intake manifold or an upper intake manifold that I don't think has ever been dyno tested before. This is the first time uh, Mahovitz was here during the testing. He said, I got something over in the shop that I want you to try to run. I don't know that it's ever been on the dyno before. We had it on a vehicle. He said the drivability was terrible. He said, but it did make more power. So if you want, I'll go grab it and he went over and grabbed it and brought it back and I'm like oh yeah that thing obviously is awesome and you know if you look at it and you think back to the time when the guys had the Downs boxes and Hartman boxes and all those things basically short runner deals with the single throttle body this is kind of like that only way way cooler because it has two big oval blades and then no runners underneath they're just basically oval openings that attach to the lower manifold now, obviously, a stock 302 isn't the ideal application for something like this, where we're shortening the runner so much and adding a whole bunch of airflow, because really it can't take advantage of it. But we tested it nonetheless, and really our plan was to run it like this, and then also test it after we have a set of airflow research heads and a camshaft and stuff, and test it after we've made the motor combination more powerful and needing the additional airflow. But here's what happened with this test, and this thing is very, very cool. So we ran our 302 combination with the roller rockers and the long two headers uh, tuned with the Holly HP setup and it made 258 horsepower you saw in the last test and 317 318 foot pounds of torque here's what happened when we added the AccuFab piece you can see as we would I think pretty much expect um, it made more power on the top because we've shortened the runners basically only using the runner length in the lower manifold and then we've got a radius entry with a bunch of additional airflow but quite honestly I don't know how much extra airflow this combination needed being basically stock headers on it but the power output went from 258 horsepower up to 267 horsepower and peak torque dropped as we kind of expected from 317, 318 foot pounds down to a peak of 304 foot pounds. So the shorter runner deal lost power up to 4,400 RPM and then added power, you know, out past that. And if we had a combination that had ported heads and a better camshaft in it, and obviously maybe even much more displacement and stuff, this thing would come into play. I just thought it was awesome because it hasn't been on the dyno, even though they had it laying around since probably 1989 or so. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. But before we go, it's important to point out that we did have some issues with this. And that's that on these cylinder heads that we ran this test on, we had different um, valve tip heights so the lash wasn't exactly the same for all the testing and because of that i'm going to redo this test with another set of heads on this combination to find out what really happens